Hello, my name is Darren Thomas and I am the Director of Educational Research Techniques. In this video, we're going to learn about completing or completing the, complete the square of a binomial expression. So let's begin. So when we're talking about a binomial expression, we're talking about something that takes the form of this. So go ahead and give you my example here. x squared plus bx. So you can clearly see that we have two terms here. And so what we want to do here is that we want to be able to convert it to something that follows the, you know, the basic pattern of, you know, this a plus b squared, if you will. That's what it is. And by doing this, we call it completing the square. Why do we call it completing the square? Well, because as you know, a square has the same length and the same width. And so what we're trying to figure out here is basically this is kind of like the area. We know the area of the square and we want to figure out well what's the length and the width and so that's kind of what's happening to give you um, some insight into what that phrase means we're trying to complete the square by trying to figure out okay we have the area but what if we wanted to, to make this so that we knew the length and the width instead of the area so to stop making this abstract let's go ahead and get started with an example so let's just say here that you have the following x squared minus 20 x like so now, here is what we need to do. And this is the secret to dealing with these kind of, uh, they're basically um, these type of an equation or expression, with, if you will. You take the B term, which is our coefficient 20, this is our B term, and this is what you do. You go 1 half, oh, let me write it off to the side first. You take, you multiply by 1 half, and then you square that. So this is what we do with our coefficient here. So in other words, this is what we're going to do. We're going to do, let me change the color. We're going to take 1 half, multiply it by negative 20, and then we're going to square root that. If we do that, we can take the first step towards uh, making our, 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 what do you call it, our um, completing the square. Now, one thing I forgot to mention was that in order to complete the square, we have to take the binomial expression and convert it into a quadratic fun quadratic formula of your quadratic expression. In other words, we take it from being a binomial to a trinomial. And the reason that we're taking our negative 20 here, our, our coefficient here, our, our B term, if you will, and multiplying by one half and then squaring is that this will give us the third, the third, uh, the third term in our tri in our trinomial. So let me just go through the steps, and I hope this will make sense through seeing the example. So one half times negative 20 is going to be, you could probably tell, negative 10. And so we have negative 10 squared. Now, of course, if we square negative 10, we now get 100. So this is what we now have in terms of our binomial. This is what we have. We're going to have x squared, our original stuff, minus 20x plus 100. And you can see that this makes sense already. Now, what's happening is as follows. We need now to find a number that when we add them together, it, it comes up to negative 20. But when we, when we multiply them, it comes out to positive 10. And you know, this is not too hard. You can probably see just from experience playing with numbers that our answer is going to be x minus 10, excuse me, x multiplied by the quantity of x minus 10. Or another way to write this would be x minus 10 squared. You could probably see that. So a lot of times, you know, the answer is right here, <laughs> if you're watching carefully. Now, what does this mean? Essentially, if I were to draw my square, this is what I have. The area is going to be x squared minus 20x plus 100. And we found this 100 through doing these steps right here. That's how we got the number 100. We multiplied the b term by 1 half, and then we squared it. And so, in other words, our length and our width is going to be x minus 10, x minus 10. We completed the square by doing this information down here at the bottom. This is essentially what we've done here. And so, what we've done is we've taken this, which is a binomial, and we were able to convert it into a trinomial and then complete the square and find out a way to simplify it even more. That's kind of what we did there. Let's do another example. Uh, this time we're going to have y squared plus 13y. All right. Now, remember, we have our x term here. I mean, we have our bx term right here. 
Now, I want you to think, just kind of be creative here. Essentially, what we're saying is we're trying to find the C term. Right now, the C term is zero, if you will. It's zero. And we're trying to figure out, okay, what is the constant that we can use here to help to try to simplify this a little bit more so we can complete the square? So we follow the same steps as last time. We take our coefficient 13, and this is what we do. We one half times 13, put a little thing here, and then we square that. That's what we're gonna do. So this one is kind of wild. Um, basically, you take uh, 13, uh, 13 times uh, one half times 13. You know, it's 13 over 2, if you will, 13 over 2, and then we square this. And so we end up with the, the final uh, answer here that's going to be 169 over 4. Now that's kind of a wild number right now, but we're going to work with that. So let's go ahead and take that now. And this is what we have. y squared plus 13y plus 169 over 4. Now we have to come up with, an, with a number that when we add it, when we, I'm sorry, excuse me, when we add it together, it comes up to 13y, and when we multiply it, it comes up to 169 over 4. Of course, you can imagine what, what an answer that's going to be. But the easiest way to look at that is simply to find out, okay, what happens if I square these numbers here? Because remember, we're trying to complete the square. I square these numbers. So essentially what you get is this. You get y plus 13 over 2 y plus 13 over 2. That is, your answer is almost complete, but if we simplify it even further, we get y plus 13 over 2 squared. That's what's happening there. And you can check this yourself if you desire to. And so um, if we do it like this, and you can see that 13, 13 times 13 is going to be 169. 4 times 4 is going to be 4. That gives you this answer right here. 13 over 2 times 13 over 2, this is 13 over 2 plus 13 over 2 will give you 13. You know, it all works out. The numbers all work out accordingly. And so this, of course, is your answer. And so again, drawing my square, I know this is not exactly drawing the scale. Please be patient with me. But your area is essentially y squared plus 13y plus 169 over 4. And you can figure out right here that the length and the width is y plus 13 over 2 y plus 13 over 2 like that so that one was a little bit trickier because it involved fractions but let's do one more to try to wrap up this video this one is also a little tricky but it shouldn't be too hard to figure it out if you follow the steps intuitively so let's say I have n squared plus 1 over 4 n this is what I have so again you can see here that this is my b term right here remember this is from the first slide or the second slide excuse me and so I gotta do 1 half times 1 over 4, and then I square this. So we know that 1 half times 1 4 is going to be 1 over 8. And then when I square that, I end up with 1 over 64. So this will be my C term, if you will, to, make, to create my trinomial or my quadratic expression. So having said that, now we would have n squared plus 1 over 4 n plus 1 over 64. Now, I need to figure out what number when I add it together gives me 1 fourth, and what number when I multiply gives me 64. And again, using your common sense or you know, you're familiar with math, basically if you, if you find the square root of this bottom number right here, it'll help you out a lot. And so, here's the answer. The answer is going to be n plus 1 over 8 n plus 1 over 8. And you can see that 1 over 8 times 1 over 8 is 164, and 1 8 plus 1 8 is 1 4th. You can see that. And so that's how we get it. Of course, n times n is n squared. And so to simplify it to the simplest way possible, you know that we get n plus 1 over 8 squared. And that's our answer. So let me go back and explain what we've talked about through this video before I conclude. So we've been looking at how to complete the square of a binomial expression. A binomial expression has two terms. And the generic formula for that is, I don't know if I put that anywhere. Let me just go ahead. The generic formula for that is x squared plus or, plus or minus bx. That's what we're looking at here. And so what you do here is you take the, the coefficient in front of 
the, the, the variable that is not raised to the second degree and you multiply by one half and then square it and that's what you do. You do that to find that third term to make it to take it from a binomial expression to a trinomial expression. So you can see here we did one half times negative 20 squared that gives us negative 10 squared that gives us 100. This 100 becomes the third term in your what used to be a binomial. And so now you have the, the trinomial x squared minus 20x plus 100 and then you factor that accordingly and you're able to get your answer. And we call it completing the square because we now know the length and the width in addition to the area. This, the quadratic formula is kind of always like the area of the square, if you will. And completing the square is where you find out, okay, what the length and the width. If I can make a binomial term, the same binomial term that when they're multiplied create the, the quadratic expression or the trinomial, if you will. And this example is just more of the same except now we were dealing with fractions this time but it's the same basic concepts you start with your binomial expression and what you do is is that you uh, again you you, t you multiply the, the coefficient in front of the second term by one half and you square it this time we got a fraction that was a little bit different but again we take this fraction and now we have a trinomial expression right over here and then you factor it accordingly like shown and again, we did it with another uh, example of that here in this particular uh, slide as well, where we start with um, a binomial expression, we convert it to a trinomial, and then we find the uh, we factor it to find the completed the completion of the square. So I hope that you know these things that we've talked about and discussed were clear, and that you were able to understand what we were talking about. I want to thank you for watching. My name is Darren Thomas. I'm the director of educational research techniques. Take care.